God is good. And it's wonderful to be in the house of God. And happy new months. Amen. 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 Father, teach us this morning. Yes. Speak to us this morning. Amen. Tell us your heart this morning. As we are ready to hear from you. Like Mary, we sit at your feet. Teach us, O oh Lord. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. I watched a film, a movie, and I borrowed the title of my message from that movie. The title is The Perfect Storm. I'm sure some of you have watched it before. Very entertaining. Some kind of science fiction kind of movie. So in this movie, six people decided to go fishing. They decided to go on a fishing expedition. And so they gathered their things. Food, nest, water, you name it. Their families came to the port to see them off. They kissed, you know, bye-bye, and then they left. Then they started harvesting. They were very happy because harvest was good. The fish they were catching were big, huge ones. And you could see them struggling to pull the fish out of the water at times. Then came a storm. So I borrowed the title from that movie. The name of their ship was Andrea Gale. So we are going to use that name in my preaching as well. This morning I'm going to talk to you about a man in the Bible who also encountered some kind of storm. And this man's name is Jonah. The book of Jonah is a very short book. Four chapters. The Bible scholars classify Jonah as one of the small prophets. Only they know the criteria they use. But the book of Jonah is written very simply. Anybody can read it and get something out of it. And so you and I are going to use this book today. Keep your Bibles in Jonah because we are just going to be in Jonah throughout. So we start with Jonah chapter 1 and the verse 1 to 4. And it reads, Now the Lord, now the word of the Lord came to Jonah, son of Amittai, saying, Arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, and cry out against it, for their wickedness has come up to me. But Jonah arose, and Jonah arose to flee to Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. He went down to Joppa. He found a, a, a ship going to Tarshish. So he paid the fare and went down into it to go with them to shout to Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. The verse 4 says, But the Lord sent out a great wind on the sea, and there was a mighty tempest on the sea, so that the ship was about to be broken. This story, everybody knows it. So God appeared to Jonah and said, Pack your things, go to Nineveh, because I have a message for the people of Nineveh. Go and tell them to stop misbehaving. Go and tell them to do the right thing. Because they are behaving bad. They are bad people. So go tell them to stop. Their wickedness has come up to me. And the Bible tells us that Jonah refused to go. He 
instead of going to Nineveh, the Bible tells us that Donah went down to Joppa, boarded a ship going to Tarshish. Now, the amplified version tells us what Tarshish is. In fact, it said he went to Tarshish, the most remote of the Phoenician trading places then known. So Tarshish was a remote place, very far. So Jonah was trying to go far from God. Two things come to mind when you read these four verses. The first one is disobedience. Right? So if you were connected to our Bible studies on Fridays, this topic came up and we were told that disobedience started way back before the Garden of Eden when Satan rebelled against God. By then, he was in charge of praise and worship in heaven. God told Adam and Eve, you have everything. I have given you everything. But this particular tree, just don't eat it. Simple instructions. Simple thing that God said. Just like Jonah. It's just like I tell you, you know what? Go to my neighbor. Tell my neighbor to reduce the volume of his music. Simple. But this Jonah decided not to. So the second thing that comes in mind was that Jonah is trying to run away from the presence of God, forgetting that where he was going, Tarshish was also created by God. So then I ask, how can you run away from the one who even knew you before you became a clot of blood in your mother's womb? David tried it. And he came to the conclusion that where can I run to? Even when I go inside the grave, your eyes see me. Even when I go inside the sea, your hand can reach at me. So I'm telling us that there is no way we can run away from the presence of God. So these two things come to mind. Now, when you, you see, Jonah tried to run away and the Bible tells us that God put up a strategy to bring him back. So, nowhere in the Bible where we were, where we told that when God sent Jonah to, to, to Nineveh, Jonah needed some to, make, to put in some effort. You will see that when Jonah decided to go to Tarshish, the Bible tells us that he had to pay the fare. And we were told in one of our Bible studies that God cannot demand from you something that he has not already put in you. So if you want to operate outside the will of God, then you have to put in your own effort. And you and I know that our effort comes to zero. We cannot. So God counterattacked Jonah. You will see that the verse 3, he says, but Jonah. So this type of Jonah, we are going to name this Jonah, but Jonah. I know why I'm telling you this. Keep your Bible in Jonah. We are going to dive into it. Then the verse 5 and 6. It says, when Jonah boarded the ship, the Bible says in these verses that he went down found himself a comfortable place and my dear friend started sleeping. So when the storm came, the unbelievers on the ship, the captain in that ship, everybody started praying to their gods. But the child of God, the messenger of God, was sleeping. I believe the church of God or the body of Christ is sleeping somehow. We are sleeping. The reason why I'm saying that is that when you look at Jesus' life and yes, 
yesterday during our breakthrough prayer, Bishop hammered on that. She brought up the prayer life of Jesus. When Jesus was going to be crucified, before then, he decided to pray. He called his disciples. He says, you know what? I am so much in pain. I am agonizing. Three of his best friends. He says, stand with me. Pray with me. Then he went. He came back an hour later. They were sleeping. And Jesus asked them, so you couldn't even stand with me for one hour. Somewhere in Revelation chapter 3, the Bible started addressing the sleeping states of the church of Saudis. Some version says the sleeping church. Another version said the dead church. So you can be alive and spiritually dead. Inactive. Nothing moves you. Nothing bothers you. And we are seeing it today. We all put ourselves under the curtain of COVID. And we don't want to do anything. You wake up in the morning. Your office, your home office is just one step. So when you wake up, Cardinal will even say, you don't even say good morning to God. You go into your first meeting, which maybe start at 7 a.m., before you go and take your shower. In between that, God doesn't even appear. So Jonah slept. The captain came. He said, you sleeper. Isn't it shocking that somebody from outside will come and tell a child of God, sleeper, wake up, also call your God. Maybe he will hear. And he will send help. Because the verse 4 tells us that their boat was just about to break. So, when you read a story, you see that, uh, you know, there was a lot of discussions and they got to know that in actual fact, Jonah was a problem. Jonah was the issue. He is because of Jonah that they were having those problems. So then they discussed, they prayed because they didn't want Jonah's blood to be on their hands, blah, blah, blah. Then they prayed and Jonah says, you know what, you people, you shouldn't even pray. Just take me and, you know, throw me overboard and your problem will be solved. And why it becomes interesting is that Jonah knew he was disobeying. Jonah knew he was no longer in the will of God. Now, Allow me to make a couple of corrections before we continue. The story of Jonah is even taught in Bible uh, in Sunday classes, right? When you read the verse 17, first I want to tell you that nowhere in the Bible was it question of a whale. Because when this story is being told, people say, oh, the whale swallowed Jonah. In actual fact, there was, there was a story that they said, uh, that one preacher man was talking about Jonah. And he said, oh, and, and, and Jonah swallowed the whale. And the people were like, no, 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 it's the opposite. It's the other way around. And he said, anyway, there was a swallow. So, <laughs> so... I want us to walk out from here biblically correct. Nowhere in the Bible was it about a whale. Even Jesus, when he was talking about his death and resurrection, he said, just like Jonah spent three days and three nights in the belly of the sea monster. That is how he called it. This version says a great fish. Another version said a giant fish, a big fish. So there was no whale. When I was preparing this, I decided to think why the concept of the whale. Bible Sunday class, we have these pictures that we use and I googled it and one of them, you see this very frightened 
Jonah that, you know, they were catching and they were going to throw him. And there was this very happy whale right by the boat with his mouth open, ready to swallow. Hey, meat is coming. He was very happy. That is where this concept is coming from. So today we are correcting it. When you read, the second correction I want to make is that when you read the verse 17 of Jonah chapter 1, it says, Now the Lord had prepared, had prepared a great fish to swallow Jonah. And Jonah was in the belly of the fish for three days and three nights. Now, when you read the verse 15, today we are going to bring some verses before others. Okay, that's why I said keep your Bibles there. When you read the verse 15, it says, So they picked up Jonah and threw him in the sea. And the sea ceased from, from its region. So, they picked Jonah, threw him in the sea. That is the verse 15. When you look at the verse 17 and you put it together, it gives you the Sunday class picture. Meaning that when they threw Jonah, God has prepared the fish to swallow Jonah which we taught in, in Sunday class. But that is far from what happened. That is not what happened. A lot happened between Jonah falling into and the fish swallowing him. And this, you can get it in the chapter 2. So when you read the Bible, this story, and you stop at Chapter 1, the verse 17, you miss it. You get as if you are still being told the story. But Jonah chapter 2, the verse 3, for example. Jonah, when he was swallowed by the fish, started narrating what he went through. It was a dangerous thing. Jonah nearly lost his life. Jonah actually fell into the water, spent some quality time in the sea. Even then, the fish hadn't quite swallowed Jonah yet. So, the, the verse 3 of Jonah chapter 2 says, Jonah narrating his experience, right? They said, for you cast me into the deep, into the heart of the seas, and the flood surrounded me. Your billows and your waves passed over me. Verse 5. The waters surrounded me, even to my soul. The deep closed around me. The weeds were wrapped around my head. Nowhere in the Bible where we told that Jonah knew how to swim. In actual fact, he knew how to swim. He knew how to swim just like me. You put him in the water, he goes deep down. Best swimmer, Olympic. So Jonah was, was like caught in there. When you look at the, even the verse 6, he says he was like imprisoned. The movie I watched, The Perfect Storm. These guys are fishermen. And you know that fishermen are friends to the water. They can read the sea, the waves. And then they position their boat and, and so on. So they are knowledgeable when it comes to marine science. And in the movie, one guy fell into the sea. There was a storm. It was raining. There was wind. He fell in. Somebody who is a fisherman, he started gasping for, 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 for air. Because everything was just throwing him upside down. He was going up and coming down. You could see him with his mouth open. So Jonah experienced almost death. And this is what happened. So the fish didn't swallow Jonah. 
cry there. And two things Jonah did when the fish swallowed him. You know, like we, we can see in Deuteronomy somewhere, the mama eagle, when it's time for the eaglet to fly or to start soaring, the Bible tells us that the mama eaglet will go and then stir up the nest, making their lives uncomfortable. Sometimes the mama eagle will pick the eaglet straight into the air and she will release the eaglet and the eaglet will try to be balancing and so on. But the mama eaglet, the mama eagle never took her eyes off her baby eaglets. This is what jo uh, God did for Jonah. Jonah was in the sea. Jonah disobeyed. Jonah was trying to run away. And then he, he was thrown into the sea. Jonah was almost dying. Then God sent the fish to swallow Jonah. Look at this fish from this other angle. Most of the time we were told that the fish was like a kind of punishment. I don't think it is completely correct. Because the guy was going to die and God sent the fish. So in actual fact, God used this fish to save Jonah from dying. To prevent Jonah from dying. Why? Because Jonah was a carrier of a plan of God. That is why I believe that we cannot die until we have accomplished that for which God has sent us down here. So the fish swallowed Jonah. And Jonah was in the belly of the fish. You remember when Jonah boarded the ship, he wasn't praying. But the Bible tells us in Jonah chapter 2, I believe the verse 9. No, the verse uh, before that. He says, the verse 2. He says, I cried out to the Lord because of my affliction. And he answered me, the Jonah that entered the ship went to sleep. But this Jonah that the fish swallowed, started praying. Listen, God is not always showering us with blessings. God is not always smiling, oh my son, come, blah, no, 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 no. Because he himself said in Proverbs, he said, do not hide the rod from your child. When you hit your child with the rod, he's not going to die. So God corrects us. So in this passage, God was not treating Jonah like a baby. Like the mama eagle. God put Jonah into that situation to wake him up. The fishermen called Jonah and said, wake up and pray. This one nobody called Jonah. You and I know that if you refuse to voluntarily pray, to voluntarily seek the face of God. God can put you in on some hot seat. Eh? Your pastor cannot help you. Your money cannot help you. Your friends cannot help you. You will be so much in a corner that all that you can do is to kneel down and pray. Jonah wanted to become a catfish. To cover himself with slime. God says, hey, then he was like dodgy. So God created a prayer closet for Jonah and locked him up. Why? Because God says, call upon me and I will tell you, I will show you. God wants to show us, but we are catfish. Show the cash cash. A, 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 a sick, hide and sick. Sick and hide. You know, so, 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 so he's looking for you and, you know. So in the belly of the fish, the Bible tells us that 
Jonah, he started praying. The second thing Jonah did, you see, if Jonah chapter 2, the verse 10, was written before Jonah chapter 2, the verse 9, humanly speaking, we will understand. What I'm saying, let, let me say it again. If Jonah chapter 2, the verse 10 was written before the verse 9, humanly speaking, we will understand. Because even in Nigerian movies, when the rich guy bless the village girl, the village girl will gather her family and they will go and thank the rich guy. And so, I am not impressed by people who give testimonies after the miracles. I am not impressed by people who give testimonies after they have been healed. Because everybody can do that. Don't get me wrong. I am not saying that when God helps you to pay your bills, don't thank him. Don't acknowledge it. But what I am saying is that when you walk through that door and you have issues, your bills are not paid. Your body's like my knee is paining me. Your children are giving you hard time. Maybe you run to the ear. And yet in that situation, because the verse 9 tells us that when Jonah was still in the belly of the fish, he gave thanks. So what impressed me is people who come into the house of God and when the Jessica and the Daniels are here, then they are praising God until they are clothed will fall. You see? Yeah, when you come, despite the fact that your house is hot, you can still praise God. And then, that is the walk by faith. walk by faith. Now see what these two things did for Jonah. We said Jonah, when he got into the belly of the fish, he started praying. He started thanking God. And then God instructed the fish to vomit Jonah. Now I ask, what actually did the fish vomit? I know some scholars, they have issues with this story. Because they believe that when you eat, or when the fish swallowed a, a, a live fish, it goes through a lot and then the fish has to die. So they don't see how Jonah could stay in the belly of a fish for three days and come out. In fact, I went to the National Aquarium and I saw all kinds of fish. Some, some of them have their, that mouth that can swallow. You see, so, so, so I asked myself, I said, what did the fish swallow? And what did the fish vomit? So this fish, we said earlier on that God used it to save Jonah. Right? Then the fish was in the belly of, Jonah was in the belly of the fish. When we eat, I am not a medical doctor, but the little I know about the digestive system is that when you eat, the big particles are broken down. There are all kinds of things, you know, the, 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 the bile and the, and the stomach, they come to, you know, all kinds of hormones, 
consecration and things. So that thing becomes small. It's all broken. And it becomes so small for the body to use and to grow. Then the system, then the whole thing. So, so the chaff comes out. Then the nutrient is being used. So the scholars who have issues with this, I think they just have to read a little further to analyze the thing that came out from the fish. The Jonah type that the fish vomited. Didn't we say that the digestive system breaks things? So the bad Jonah, you remember when I started, I said the Jonah in chapter 1, we will call him bad Jonah. Because before the sentence I said, but Jonah decided to go to that. So, but Jonah was swallowed. Then when you read Jonah chapter 3, It says, after the fish vomited Jonah, so Jonah went to Nineveh. So the fish actually vomited a soul Jonah from a bad Jonah to an obedient Jonah. You remember the Jonah that the fish swallowed was disobedient. He was running away from God. But the fish, but the Jonah that the fish Vomited, became obedient. He was no longer running away from God. He was ready to carry out the work. The Jonah that the fish vomited was an improved Jonah, an enhanced Jonah, a second Jonah. That tells me about the born again system kind of thing. So the Jonah that came out was a born again Jonah because he had God at heart now. Now, the Jonah that went inside the, fish, inside the, the, the ship was too free. He had energy. He had money. So he, he could pay the fare to do his own worldly things outside the will of God. But the Jonah that the fish swallowed has become a prisoner of Christ. Forward looking. And it is very amazing how God repeats himself. Whatever he said to you in the beginning will be the same thing he will tell to you after he has polished you, broken you down so that you can carry out the assignment. You remember in the first, in Jonah 1, the, chap, the, the verse 2, he says, Arise and go to Nineveh. After the fish vomited Jonah, God appeared again. And he said the same thing. Arise, go to Nineveh, that great city. So he doesn't change. Even to the sequence of his sentences. The message will remain the same. In Bible studies this morning, we were talking about how he will not impose himself on you. From time to time he does. From time to time he will bring you back. There's something we call, you know, when you are going to, uh, 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 to the well and your bucket falls in, there's this thing that they had, you know, to we call it kotokule. He will use that to pull you back. So it tells me that when God says do it, and Jonah delivered 
the message. He started, you see, when you are born again, when, when, when you develop the, the happiness to work for God, you start from day one. Nineveh, Jonah 3, the first three verses, it tells us that Nineveh, you can walk through or you can run through it in three days. So, at the beginning, Jonah didn't want to do it. But in chapter 3, Jonah started preaching from day one of work. He wasn't delaying anymore. Because he had this correction. He, he went through it. And now he understands that the will of God a primordial. It should be the first. And Jesus, that is the only verse that I'll give to you that is not in the book of Jonah. And we will read it. Matthew 28 and the verse 19. It says, Go therefore, make disciples of all nations. It sounds to me like the message that Jonah was given. Go and testify about God. Go and work. Go and do something. This fish can be compared to an incubator whereby the old Jonah entered went through some kind of system, went through. Then, when the message came, go, he just got up and left and went. I don't know where you stand. Whether you are the bad Jonah, or you are the soul Jonah, or you are in the middle somewhere, either in the sea or in the belly, but wherever you are, it is not late because God is repeating the same message. Go and make disciples. Go and tell the people of Nineveh to repent. Go and testify. Tell people what the Lord has done for you. The message is still the same. To come to the conclusion, I am just going to ask that you go back and remember the first instruction you were given as an individual. What is the purpose? What, is, what was your calling before COVID? Before we started sleeping? Because in Revelation 3, the beginning somewhere, he says, if you don't wake up, he will come like a thief. And we will not see him. But the end of our journey is to see God. So we don't want to miss it. So let's wake up from our slumber. Start praying. Start thanking God. And start doing the work of God. That is the only way out. So I am here with... Uh, Wake up call like an alarm. So that we will take the things of God seriously. More seriously than we are doing. And apply it to ourselves and to our neighbors. I don't know if I've made sense this morning. I don't know if I've spoken to somebody this morning. So in a minute, you are going to burn, bow your head and pray. Wherever you have fallen, wherever you have started sleeping, time for prayer, you are not there. Time to worship God. You are just taking it casually. This is a death and life matter. For we want to finish this race well and get the crown and so father
just like you gave Jonah a second chance. We pray that you give us a second chance. And we promise, we pledge that we will take your assignment seriously this time around. In the mighty name of Jesus. I thank you, O Father. And I bless you. And I give you all the glory. Help us. Help us, O oh Lord. Help us to do your will. In the name of Jesus.